first cast at Fraser. There we go. Oh, that's a nice tailor. That's a nice tailor. G'day guys, Sammy here and welcome to another Sammy Hitsky Fishing Adventure. Only today is not an adventure, no, today we're going to be talking about everything you need to know to get stuck into a few tailor, predominantly from the beaches this time. Now I'm on location right now at one of Australia's most popular tailor fishing locations, beautiful Fraser Island. It's about two hours before we have to get ready for the afternoon session, so the perfect time to go through all my kit and get you guys armed with a bit of knowledge so you can get out there and have a crack yourself. Uh, we're going to go through pretty much everything guys, so if you haven't chased Taylor before or you have and you just want a few pointers, plenty of info coming straight at you. Hope you enjoy. in the waves. He's a bit better fish, I think. Oh, he's a lot better fish. Righto, guys, we're going to be talking about both lures and bait fishing today, but we're going to go fully through one, and then we'll address the other. So we're going to start with bait, and we're going to kick it off with chatting about setups. Now, this is my current tailor fishing off the beach setup. It's what I'd call the new school version of the old school. This is a 65 Stealth, an LV 65 Stealth. Uh, it's quite new, you can see it's vented. Uh, super, super light compared to the old school stainless backed ones. And this is actually paired with the new Stealth Rod, LV Stealth Rod. It's a 650 or R650S. Uh, these will be coming out very shortly. This is actually a prototype I've been testing for them. Absolutely awesome, casts like a dream. But the whole combo itself is super, super light, which is why I love it. Uh, the old school version, something like this. This is still a relatively new Alvi, but the old glass rods, very effective also, but the weight is uh, is a lot more. But hey, if you've got an old glass rod in the shed, I'm sure it'll do the job. They've done it for the last 150 years, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Now, the reason I like to fish Alvis is because in the surf, they literally are unbeatable. Uh, they don't break, you can wash them in salt water, they don't corrode, they love the sand and they cast a long way. I've got this spool with 20 pound mono, that's Schneider line, I find it really good for the beach. Um, 20 pound will have you sorted for both the beach and the rocks. If you're just gonna go solely beach, you get away with 15, uh, but you do have to keep in mind, sometimes you are casting quite large sinkers, and 15 pound does have a tendency to go crack if you, uh, if you mess up, so 20 pound, a bit more forgiving. Also gives you plenty of pulling power if you need to stick it to a Jew or a shark or a really big greenback. Uh, 20 pounds should have you covered. Now these rods are a little bit different to the old glass style in that they're a really fast taper. Now, in terms of casting, I've been able to get a heap more distance with these than I could with my old glass rod. Um, just purely, I reckon, the, that whip in the rod, that, that fast taper really just rockets the bait and sinker out. Um, it's a little bit different to cast. I know the first time I tried to cast this fast tape rod, I just about ploughed it into the surf because you do let go of it at a different time than your old glass ones. But I'll tell you what, uh, it does cast like a rocket. And this will have you sorted for anything from a 30 centimeter chopper all the way to greenbacks and, um, and small dew if you manage to come across one. If you were gonna use a spinning outfit, something like this, this is a surf casting reel. You'll see that spool there is quite a bit longer than what you'd usually expect to see on a spinning reel. Something like that is built for casting long distances. You may as well spool it with braid. And this rod is a 12 foot, six to 10 kilo spin rod. Um, probably a bit, little bit light for casting large sinkers, but anything in between and lures, this would be great for. Um, and if you were just starting out or you just want to get out there and go fishing without wanting to learn anything new, something like this would be great for bait fishing and lure fishing. But we'll talk about that a bit later. Now rig wise, this is my preferred rig. That's a two gang with a swivel between, about I'd say 40 to 50 centimeters of trace, a swivel, then another little section of trace with the sinker in between, a restricted rig, and another swivel on top. And that attaches to your main line. Now hook wise, I personally prefer larger hooks and less of them. That's why I opt to go a two gang rather than four gang of four O's or a three gang of five O's or something like that. 
I like having extra gape. Tail have quite a large mouth, so the extra gape I find gives me a better hook up rate. And um, being two larger hooks, I've still got plenty of hook coverage there. Now, there is some debate going on whether a swivel between the hooks is necessary. Personally, I love it. It, uh, it helps with your rigging. While you're putting your hooks through your bait, it's actually a lot easier to maneuver that second hook when you've got a, trip, a swivel between. And it also gives you that second chance draw that if you hook a fish lightly in the top hook, that back hook will quite often swing into that fish's face and create a lot more positive hookup. Now the other advantage of two larger hooks is you don't need to use as big of a bait, which we'll go through shortly. Now, in terms of leader, I'd usually go between 50 and 60 pound on that leader there. Uh, that's not gonna stop a big tailor from biting you off at all. Uh, it just makes it a bit easier to grab while you're landing your fish and may save you a little bit if they just nick it. And that same leader between the sinker and swivel there. Now sinker size will depend on the conditions you have on the day. If you've got a lot of sweep, you're gonna need a big sinker. Generally, I'm using an eight, a nine, or a 10 if it's really rough. Um, with an eight or nine, you can get a heap of distance from your cast. Anything lighter, you tend to get wind affected, but eight, nine, and 10 on the uh, rare occasion, you get a big cast and you know your bait's gonna stay there. Now, the only time I would change from that is if I do something like this, and that is use a wire trace. Now, generally I wouldn't use wire unless it was night time and I was chasing really big greenbacks. It's just a bit of insurance in case they swallow your bait and go over the whole lot and try and bite you off. That gives you um, that, that bite protection that you don't have from the mono. Exactly the same setup. I've still got the 50 to 60 pound between the swivels there for my sinker. Uh, then I've got the 40 or you'd use 50 or 60 pound wire. I don't think it'd matter too much between your swivel and your hooks. Same length just wire instead of mono. Okay, that's set up and rig sorted. Now let's move on to baits. Now, one of the most popular baits going around and has been for the last million years is the humble Western Australian Pilchard. Taylor absolutely love them, but other baits you can use are flesh baits like mullet, bonito, uh, even strips of Taylor work well, garfish. Um, they have been known to eat pippies and that sort of thing a lot less regularly than your, your fleshier baits. Uh, but those would be the main baits I would suggest stocking up on if you're going to go for a tailor session. Now, I mentioned before the two large hooks allows you to use smaller baits. And for something like the humble pilchard, that means I would actually use half a pilchard at a time. Now, not only does that mean you effectively double your bait supply by getting two baits out of the one pilchard, it also means you can cast a lot further with the smaller bait and you've got a lot more hook coverage in that smaller piece of bait for a tailor to come through and bite. Now, whether it makes a difference using a half or whole pilch at a time, I don't think it makes any whatsoever. Um, if you're standing in a line and there's 30 or 40 blokes there all casting baits into the surf, if you've got a whole or a half, I don't think the tailor will mind one bit at all. Now, I'll show you how to rig that really quickly. Here's a little hot tip. If you find yourself a fast food tray like this one, it makes a great bait cutting board. Um, for the back of the ute, back of the car, it actually contains all your mess and it stops it from leaking everywhere. So what I'd do, you guys aren't going to be able to see this as easily, is I'd cut it on a diagonal and I'll rig it either tail to the top, like so, or head to the top, like so. Now that diagonal makes your bait a bit longer, so if you do have medium sized pilchers that just aren't quite big enough to go straight across that diagonal means you've got a bit of extra room there to put a hook in and then get your hook through the nose so i'd go through the bait like so turn the hook around and then through the hard part of the nose and that bait's going to sit very naturally like so and there isn't a tailor alive that's going to swim past that to get a hole pilchard and look at that hook coverage. You've got a hook point here, so if they hit the top of the bait, you've got a hook point here, so if they hit the mid bait, you're gonna hook them every single time. If you were rigging a flesh bait, like a slab of mullet, bonito, or tailor, something like that, I would cut it into strips, again, on the diagonal to get a bit more length out of your bait if you've got a small fillet. There's the fillet we've cut, so you can see the diagonal there. Makes our bait just a touch longer, so it fits our hooks and that's the bit we've cut off. Now that's about the width of a pilchard. So about the same width, the same length as a half a pilchard. And we rig it pretty much the same way. You want that top hook to come out right at the top there to keep your bait nice and straight and stop it from spinning. So line it up, push your hooks through from the skin side to the flesh side. The last hook should be right at the top. That sits, oh that cut job was a bit off. 
that'll sit nice and straight, fly through the air nice and easily and get you an extra 20 meters on your cast. I'm not guaranteeing that, it's up to you, but that'll cast a lot further than any hole pilchard ever would. And again, no tailor's gonna swim past that to uh, just to find a hole pilly. They're gonna smash that. You got all that hook coverage. You got hook coverage here, hook point, hook point. You're in the money. Got him. Now in terms of lure fishing, this is my combo of choice. I touched on it briefly in the bait fishing section. You can use it for bait, but uh, this thing really shines when it comes to spinning lures for Taylor in the surf or off the rocks. This has got a 5500 long cast surf spinning reel there. See that bigger spool allows for a lot longer cast. I've got it spooled with 15 pound braid, perfect for long casts and um, and you'll catch plenty of big fish on that. Now, leader-wise, I run 40 to 60 pound leader, depending on the country I'm fishing and the size of fish that are in the area, usually 40 pound will get you out of trouble. And I usually run that to what's called a fast hatch clip. It's got a ball bearing swivel here and a little twist clip, and that allows you to change lures nice and quickly. Now the rod, this is 12 foot, six to 10 kilo, nice fast taper for casting lures into orbit. You can get a stack of distance with something like this. Um, they're very comfortable to fish with because they are so light. They've got a nice long butt for chucking under your arm there and just cranking away on the reel. Now a six to 10 kilo rod like this, again, will be perfect for your small fish, but also have plenty of poke if you do hook a trevally or something a bit bigger, a rogue tuna or mackerel, big tailor. Um, even on the rocks, this thing will lift a fair bit of weight. Now when it comes to lure selection, I always like to carry a pretty wide variety. Tailor can be really fussy or not fussy at all, depends on the day. Uh, always carry a bit of everything, so I'm covered for all situations. My favorite at the moment would be sinking stick baits. Uh, you can cast them a long way, particularly the Zeppelin, 40 grams, you cast that into orbit. Nice bait fish profile, and you work that back in just about any way you can think of. Stick baits are super versatile. Um, quite often I'll cast back, crank them back like a slug, one speed, high speed, across the surface, they'll get crunched. You can let them sink and twitch them, you can sweep them, uh, you can even jig them off the bottom, they'll all get crunched. Uh, just a matter of finding what the fish are responding to on the day. You've got your casting minnow style like this. Again, it's got a little bib, uh, same bait fish profile, nice long cast on it. And that's got its own action, so quite often I'll just do a slow wind, just enough so I can feel it hammering away, and uh, particularly big tail will come through and clean that up. Uh, surface lures, you got a little skipping popper profile there. Again, 40 grams and the Halco version. These are all long cast poppers. Anything that you can cast a long way that will skip across the surface and look like a garfish or a pilchard will get absolutely smashed. Taylor are suckers for surface when they're in the mood. And then, of course, one of the most popular and easiest ones to fish is the humble slug. I'm a big fan of the Halco Twisty, plenty of action, and also things like these. This is the uh, Shore Catch Night Jig. 40, 50, 60, 70 grams, all work a treat. You can cast them an absolute mile, particularly when there's wind around. Um, with the slugs, it's pretty well as simple as belting it out into the surf and letting it sink to the bottom and just cranking it back as fast as you can. Perfect option in windy weather and when you need to cast a long way. Have yourself a combination of those in your uh, tackle box and you should find something that the tailor will be eating on the day. Now, let's talk about gutters. Essential to every good tailor session and any beach session in general is picking the right gutter. So, I found a nice little example here. Now, you'll see there's a deep section of water here closest to the beach, close to the bottom of the screen, and then a really shallow section where the waves are breaking up. Now, this is at dead low tide, and I recommend if you're not familiar with reading the beach and you haven't done a lot of it, then get out on the beach at low tide and see what you're dealing with. Then go back at high tide, preferably at dawn and dusk, and, um, and that's when you can do your fishing and you'll know exactly what you're looking for. Now see this gutter's quite long, it's about 100 metres long. And what makes it good is this end bit here. So you've seen it's run along the beach there, and then we've got what we call the out. 
that's where the gutter goes along the beach and then cuts out into the uh, into the ocean. That allows big schools of fish to come in and out of the gutter, a safe passage in, but they don't have to skirt any shallow water. It's, it's not essential, but it's definitely nice to have. Now remember when the tide is high, you're gonna have an extra meter to two, two and a bit meters of water on top of all of this. So it's gonna be quite deep. Now where I would be fishing, I'd probably be situating myself around here because at high tide, those tailor will actually sit on the very back edge there, just in the deep water. Now the waves won't break on that deep section. What they will do is spill the white water into that gutter and that's where the tailor would do a lot of their feeding. They'll run up and down along the back of that gutter and look for disorientated bait fish that have been caught up in that surf zone and, uh, and then pounce on them from there. So being able to cast a fair distance because it's not always as close as this one here, this is quite narrow is very helpful in situations where you've got quite a wide gutter. Oh, you can see the waves breaking across there now. So that's shallow water. You imagine with an extra two meters of water there, that surf zone will be pushing right across and dropping white water into that gutter. And that's absolutely perfect. Now that doesn't mean you can't catch them right at your feet. Quite often times, particularly when you're fishing with a lot of people, they'll also run along the front edge of the gutter there because there's a lot of smell, there's a lot of old bait getting dropped on the ground. So for the guys who aren't super competent casters, you're still in with a shot there. Now, if you're fishing at low tide, you'll see there's deep water out the back of that, that bank. So I'd be walking across that shallow gutter and uh, casting in that deep water. It is a bit featureless though, so there's not a great deal of um, shape to it. It's just a long gutter with deep water and a back bank. Chances are the fish you catch are going to be passing through. They're not going to be necessarily just stationed up there. It's uh, luck of the draw. You've got to be in it to win it. You'll see that deep gutter just continues the whole way along. So it doesn't really change. It just gets deeper and shallower as the tide rises and falls. There's a quick little introduction to uh, tailor gutters, guys. Now when it comes to keep some tailor for a feed, it's essential to brain spike, bleed with an incision behind the gills, and ice down every single fish you intend to eat. This drastically improves their performance on the table. Then it's just a matter of scaling them, running your knife down to the spine from the top and the bottom, running your knife out past the tail, then cutting over the ribs. Job done. Well right, guys, the last thing we're gonna talk about is gutter etiquette. Now, if you don't follow some of these, it's a quick way to uh, lose a lot of friends really quickly and piss some people off. Now, the first one is if you're not super confident in your casting and you tend to spray them a bit, Either wait till the person fishing next to you, either side of you, is either whining in their line or situate yourself away from some people so it gives you some room to cast. If you cast over people, it's going to annoy people really quickly, particularly if they're casting straight and you just spray over everyone and end up tangling their lines. Uh, another thing to watch out for is if they're fishing there and there's a bit of sweep, look at the angle of people's line and uh, judge where it is first before you make a cast. You might have to go to the other side of someone and, and do some rotation work. Uh, you gotta judge the conditions on the day, but if, if everyone can keep their line straight, then you should have minimum tangles. Another one is, if you're gonna fish the night session or get there really early in the morning, turn off your headlights before you flash the gutter. Particularly if you've got high beams on or big light bar, you're gonna get a size 10 sinker straight through the windscreen if you go turning your car to face the water and just lighting up the gutter. It is uh, no good. Whether it scares the fish or not, we'll never know, but no one likes it and it's a real pain in the ass. Those are pretty well the main ones, guys. Follow them and uh, no one will get too upset with you and everyone will have fun. Uh, that brings us to the end of the Taylor tutorial. Hope you guys learnt a few things and are as keen as I am to get back out there and get stuck into a few. If you did like or learn something from this video, make sure you hit the like button, leave us a comment below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. There's plenty of fishing action coming every single Sunday at 4 p.m. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so on my website, www.sammyhitskyfishing.com. Check out the hats, key rings, all sorts of cool stuff, some cool merch coming very shortly, so keep an eye out for that as well. All the best, guys. Hope you're getting stuck into a few fish, and I'll catch you next week for another Sammy Hitsky Fishing adventure. Cheers.